Here at Tierspec, we have Land Rovers of all shapes and sizes. From ex-military monsters, collectible classics, to the epitome of the Defender in the form of a Heritage Final Edition. We often get asked both how we have so many vehicles and why we don't make more use of all of them in our videos. Well, through our series Out of the Barn, we're going to go through the story of each and every one. Hello guys and welcome back to TSPEC TV. Once again we have, we're we doing another Out of the Barn episode and this time you can probably guess what vehicle it is if you're into Land Rovers. This is indeed a Land Rover 101. Quite rare to come by nowadays uh, but luckily we got one. Uh, my dad brought this one in England and drove it all the way from England to Denmark with a couple of friends. We have had it for, for a long time. And this particular one has gone pretty much, yeah, no kilometers. It's gone 9,000 kilometers, which is pretty much new. Um, so that's also pretty cool. They got one that's pretty much spotless to start off with. It's got a tiny bit of rust in the doors and stuff, but nothing major that completely tears it apart. My dad have done some restoration work on it on the back, painted some of the parts and galvanized some of them. Uh, but overall, the state we got it in was pretty much perfect. So it was a really, really nice uh, one on one he found. The 101 was made for the British Army back in the 70s uh, by Land Rover uh, because they wanted a, a, a big Land Rover, bigger Land Rover to towing uh, bigger equipment. That's why the 101 came in and it came with the LT95 gearbox which was also the one they used in the Range Rover Classic by the time and then put that up into a 3.9 uh, Rover V8 which on the military vehicles there are um, using the 24 volt system because they have to power the radio systems and all the other instruments and pretty much all army instruments also today are powered by 24 volts uh, so this one is also 24 volts which makes it quite hard to get parts for the engine because the ignition and the pump and everything is 24 volts uh, so they are hard to come by if not impossible some of the parts but luckily this one is in, uh, in spotless condition so everything works even the test light works lights up and yeah the convoy light, the heater, so it's a, it's a really nice uh, nice vehicle we've got. What we mainly use it for is pretty much just driving around, We're not using it for any type of work. It's just a, a vehicle for fun, uh, you could say. Um, so this one, as I said, we haven't done anything really to it. We've done some restoration work on it, uh, but we haven't done any so-called mods onto it. Uh, but there are other people who have gotten the different kind of body models, because this one is a standard model with the, the canvas on. And, but then they kind of saw the potential of the vehicle and they made it to an ambulance and also the radio ones where they have a half top covering the whole back bit uh, and people have been buying those just to make them into pretty cool camper vans uh, actually we saw one at LRO about two years ago winning a competition where he completely restored it and made it just into a pretty much a camper van just smacked onto the back of it it was really really neat looking that was probably the only vehicle I would go camping in they were produced from 72 to 78 uh, and the first one only had the canvas on, uh, the canvas uh, soft top, and they were called gun tractors in the British Army. And you kind of put those two together, you got tractor, which is towing, farming equipment, plowing, and then you got a uh, gun, and gun is like something that shoots. So they took something towing a gun. This is a really, really weird name for a gun tractor, but that's what they called it. It's also referred to as a one ton. It might be a bit, why is it called the one ton? Is it because it weighs one ton? Uh, why is it about? It's because of the carrying capacity in the back is rated for one ton. So if you could be towing the cannon and then having one ton of ammunition or materials or whatever you want on the back, it will still be able to do 
that's just fine off-roading. That's why it's called the one ton. And supporting the one ton load of it, you got two Salisbury axles, uh, front and rear, really beefy ones. And people are also taking those off, uh, or just using them for high power uh, engines, putting into other ones. So they're really, really good axles on it. Even though they're old, they're really good. We have had this car for about 10 years time. Uh, We've driven in it pretty much every summer, just not last summer because we didn't have time for it. But my favorite thing about this car is the way that you're situated just over the front wheels. You've got the front wheel right under you and you've got the short bonnet bit. But if you haven't got a bonnet, the bonnet is actually in here to open up into the engine. And the reason why they did that was because you have to make it easy to load up into a plane into a container onto a uh, another truck to get transported onto the war zone. So what they did is they cut the front end off and placed the engine right next to you under here pretty much like in Unimog. Uh, and then you'll be able to store them really closely to each other when you drive them up. So instead of having you know two vehicles in one uh, cargo uh, plane you can have up to three vehicles maybe because you haven't got that long front end. It also makes it better to drive around because you can pretty much see where the whole vehicle is really easy to maneuver about. My favorite thing is probably because it's just it's so big, so beefy and old. It's like an old bomber driving around. Uh, and also that you're sitting in front of the, uh, the front wheels were very unusual to do normal cars. Even the modern cars doesn't have that kind of cutout. Only the Unimarks have that. But uh, that, that's probably my favorite thing. It's a really cool car. I absolutely love it. And the plans for the future with this vehicle is uh, probably just keeping it as stuck as possible. Just keep restoring if everything falls off or anything breaks. Uh, we haven't got any plans of modifying or putting a hard top onto it or anything. Just a nice vehicle to have to keep it standard and stuck. And that's a, uh, a history piece, pretty much. But we still want to be able to drive around whenever we want it, uh, not just to stand there. So well, it is a, a really nice vehicle to have. I absolutely love it. So cool.